goblins, ghouls, and human beings who have come to see tonight's creature feature. It is an improvised horror movie. Tonight's monster will be Forest Tummy. <laughs> The pale light of the moon shines its way down into the colorful leaves of the Arboretum. There's a slight mist in the air as the leaves crunch under her feet. A peaceful... there's, there's a banner under a cupola that says... Frankenheimer wedding today. She sees a charming little animal in the distance. Is it a rabbit? Is it a squirrel? Or is it something else? As she approaches it, she can see that the fur and the skin have peeled away from the face of whatever this thing is. There's a low squeak that comes from this weird creature. Oh, God. Jeez. Okay. She stopped moving, but the crunching of the leaves behind her continues. He turns around and sees a whirlwind of colored leaves flying up off the ground. He runs for cover in the gazebo. The the small mammal follows behind her, screeching away. As she gets into the gazebo, one of the floorboards comes loose and she falls through. The creature falls down on top of her. <laughs> on her face, she sees it up closely. It becomes larger and larger and larger. So it embraces her, squeezing, squeezing. As it embraces her, It completely engulfs the camera, and the screen turns to black. On that screen, we start to see leaves fall into a pattern. The pattern reads, Time to Fall. My name's Henrietta. Uh, I'm planning on having the kids call me Teacher Hen. Um, yeah, I think that sounds nice. Um, what can I say? I, I've i wanted to be an educator my whole life. And I say educator, not teacher, because I think it's it's more than that, right? It, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of, of being with young people and your community. And I just think I think I can make a difference here. Forestville, we don't, it's kind of a joke, right? Like we only have this one little square mile of greenery, everything else just concrete. I think that I can take my kids to the Arboretum and they can learn and they can grow and they can see their potential. And I'm just, I'm just so excited to, to plant seeds in those little minds and 
and see what blossoms. My name is Henrietta, Teacher Hen. Helen Miller, Helen Miller, remember the name, top of the ballot. City Council, you know me, you've seen me around. I've been on council before until I was not on council. And we know that wasn't always good for the town, okay? Because I think of Forestville, not second, but first. And uh, I know that I can count on your vote uh, this season because Helen Miller cares. And uh, when you think of me at the poll, think about this. Think about the last time you went to the Little Caesars on Main Street and had to wait in line when Helen Miller says we need to build a second one, okay? I love the parks as much as the next guy, but our town needs to move forward, okay? So parks, yeah, good. You got one on the playground at school. We don't need a bunch of wilderness all around us, okay? So let's think about that. And truth be told, I am in favor of the CDB, the CBD, the marijuana juice stores as well. So Vera, vote for me, Helen Miller. My name's Lumberjack Steve. Uh, I've been a part of Forest Town for my entire God-given life. Uh... I pretty much stay to myself. I like to maintain the town, if you will. Uh, pretty much every building in this town was made by these. These guys right here. <laughs> They're my hands. I, uh, I chop down the trees. I make sure that the trees are growing to their fullest potential. I read them stories nightly to ensure that they are growing not only in height, but in mind. <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite things in the world is when all all those ding dang kiddos come over from the school. I try to I try and teach them a little bit of what I know to help the generations as they grow. <laughs> uh, I guess my goal is uh, I don't know, just to make sure that the next generation is ready to take care of this place as well as I have. <laughs> Mom, Jack, Steve. My name is Dr. Pubert, and I study plant digestion at, at Big City University. And uh, I have been uh, put in this town uh, because I am not yet on a tenure track, and I would like to be. And uh, I was put on special assignment here to study leaf shape in the square mile of Arboretum Park that exists here. Um, supposedly the leaves here are shaped in a shape that is unseen by many uh, and anywhere else. It's like a weird thing that they have in this town. But uh, I would like to eventually publish a paper on my theory of plant digestion and uh, tree stomachs. Uh, however, that is seen as a fringe thing. So, <laughs> leaf shape it is. My name is Dr. Pubert, and I'm not so happy to be here. Hello, my name is Jarvis Stevenson. People call me the rich man in town. I've got some money, <laughs> but I worked for it. I worked hard for it, and I pay others to work even harder for me. <laughs> You see, I've got this town around my little finger. It's one of the last towns with a forest, and a forest means lumber. <laughs> Soon as I get rid of Forestville's final segment of lumber and export it, ooh, I'll be filthy rich. That lumberjack Steve thinks I'm some forest lover. He's easy to please. And that Helen Miller, I think she'll be a good friend to me. Ha ha ha. Ah. 
I'm going to be rich. My name? Francis Stevenson. Uh, hello, um, my name is O'Shawn Maxwell, and I come to the Arboretum to do birding. I come out and I watch birds. I, I just love birds. I mean, birds are, are, are very colorful. They have very beautiful songs, and they give me a reason to escape my marriage for a few hours out of every day, because um, that's, that's really not going so great at home. And so uh, being able to escape for a little while is... It's the thing that keeps me sane. Um, I've lately I've been coming out here, um, you know, kind of at dusk because it seems when it seems when when the the, the home life gets to be the most hostile. Um, also, you can see woodcocks if you're lucky, you know, and they do this little cool dance like this. Uh, my name is O'Shawn Maxwell. open on the city council office. Outside, the wind is blowing, the leaves are bustling. And as we move from outside the window into the office, we hear Helen going over her notes. Helen, will you please open the door to your office? I can barely hear you. <laughs> no, I'm still having trouble hearing you, Helen. Could you open the door a little wider? <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate my soundproofing. You know, I have a lot of important and secret, highly secret things I'm working on right now. But I will tell you, you are a sight for sore eyes, Francis. Well, your eyes must be sore. From looking at all these campaign posters all over your office, I'm sorry, I'm not much of a small talker. I want to cut straight to the business, Helen. Well, you know I like business, Francis. Tell me what you're up to. Well, I've heard you want to build a new Little Caesars. That's right. I think that land could be got. And I've got just the man to take it all, one tree at a time. Oh, oh, how exhilarating. You know, I've got a perfect spot. It's, well, it's on the edge of town, which I think is the beginning of the new town, really. And pizza, pizza, am I right? Right now, it's just pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kill me, Helen. I, I think you'll be a great city council member. The greatest one we've ever had. <laughs> we zoom in on one of Helen's campaign posters. It's bordered with pizzas. One of the pizzas has been replaced with a leaf. What is this? Did you see this? Someone's... Someone's mocking me. Oh, they're... Helen, I'm sure they're just celebrating you. The people here, they, they seem to like you, I think. And they might like you a little bit more with a little bit extra cash. Would I, uh, not that of course I would ask for anything directly, but I do need $1,367 to print up some gold leaf posters I would like to print. <laughs> well, As Francis leans to grab his checkbook, a reflection from his gold-plated pen uh, then turns into the sun outside, where we see Lumberjack Steve working on his trees. Excuse oh, me. Hello down there. Sorry, just up here taking care of my biz. <laughs> Hi, yes. Uh, do you know the name of that species that you are currently working on? Oh, you mean this little guy right here? Yes. This deciduous beast? <laughs> uh, this here, I, I call him Frank, uh, but most people just call him a, a, a Dutch elm. Dutch elm is is one way to say it. The other way to say it is 
uh, Francernella Dimenches. Oh, that's leave it to that's you, Hubert. Leave it to you to school me. Oh, just when I think I got it all figured out. Hey, is that Helen down there? Helen, Helen. What? Hi oh there. no, I, I'm not in. I'm not in this forest. Forget about it. Hey. Ah, oh, she's so wily, that one. Anyway, there, Pubert! There has been many a time she has creeped up behind me and startled startled the acorns out of me. <laughs> Listen, most people try to sneak up on me, but it's like as if, it's as if, you know, as the trees pull in the sun and pull in the carbon dioxide that mm. we give off. Now. We, I, yep, go ahead, Pubert. Disputed theory. Disputed. That's that's really um, the, called the photosynthetian hypothesis. And lately, there are those that are finding fault with it. All right. Well, I guess I'm just not on Dr. Pubert's face, as he had leaned closer to the plant and sits back, we see a small bite mark has been taken out of his cheek. Ooh. Oh, Easy there, see, fella. There it is. That you, should was know, you should know better than anybody that this bark bites. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Bark's root beer, right? Bark's has bite. That's their slogan. <laughs> I don't follow. It's because the tree has a, a a bark. This is what I'm. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I got too close to the tree, and. A little piece of bark bit just a tiny corner of my cheek flesh. Ah, uh, you'll be fine. Brush it off, kid. Brush it off. The camera, I'll, the, the I'll see you at the, the city the city council meeting later this evening. I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. The camera dollies backward from this scene. As it moves over the ground of the forest, a single slice of pizza comes into view. We cut to a schoolyard. This is adorable. The little children are running around everywhere, enjoying the beautiful sunny day. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Ah! Teacher Hen is the best. Can you tie my shoelaces, please? All right, kids. One, two, three. Eyes on me. One, two. Eyes on you. <laughs> One, two. Eyes on you. All right. We're going to get our branches together. Wave yeah. them in the wind. Wee. Wee. And we're going to blow our way back into the classroom. Whoa. Teacher Head. Teacher Head. I have a question. Yes, sweetie. How come Mom says I'm not allowed to be in the forest at night? Okay. Rosa? Yeah? It's important to know that um, there, are, there are some cultural differences uh, in the way that people see the Oh, forest. teacher hen? <laughs> yes, Bradford. I, I threw up. Oh. And I don't know about cultural differences, but my mom says my face might get eaten off if I go into the forest. That's what my mommy said, too. Yeah. Okay, and my grandpa, why? my great grandpa. As the crowd of children grows louder and louder and more incessant about the forest, the camera takes on the view of a small creature moving through the trees, watching what's happening on the playground. And then the camera cuts back. <laughs> should I go to the nurse, or should I clean it, or what uh, should okay. I do? Rosa, can you please take Bradford to the nurse, okay, and keep a distance? Okay. Teacher Hen? Yes. You know what my favorite tree is? Tell me. It's a sassafras, because that <laughs> ends with ass. <laughs> <gasps> we cut, we cut to, we cut to the bird, our bird watcher friend, admiring the town from a distance and in his binoculars he sees the tiny creature on the playground oh wow 
<laughs> There's a cute little animal there. I don't normally watch mammals, but I've never seen one. It's, uh, it's very, it's very, it's very cute. I can't tell if it's a, is, is that a, is that a, a marmot or a, or a squirrel? Oh, that's, that's weird. It becomes closer and closer in his binoculars. Oh, look at that. What a, what an ugly looking beast. The creature, hey, hey, the creature has tree bark instead of fur and sticks instead of teeth. Oh, maybe, maybe that, that little bark skin is like, is like a, a protective shell, like on a, on a, on a armadillo. Um, or we hear, we hear, um, a low squeaking and almost like coughing something up as balls of old leaves are are thrown up by this weird creature. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> here, um, uh, have <laughs> some water. I've got some. I've got my canteen here. You just want to have a little sip? The little balls of leaves unfurl into tiny little leaf creatures that scamper off into the woods. What? <laughs> <laughs> the hell was that? One uh, one tiny little leaf inchworms its way up his pant leg. Hello! What is this? Hello! H hello! Its uh, points oh. are sharp. Oh! Because As the blood trickles down from where the the leaf uh, pricked his finger, the camera follows the eeriness in the air back to the council office. Oh, hello. It just feels chilly in here all of a sudden. You're Dr. Pubert? Pubert? Yeah. Oh, yep. I'm just, I, was, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm early for the meeting and now it's weird. Being early is being on time. At least that's what my father said before he, he passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it's that. A, it's a hard day. You know, it's the anniversary of his death along with, well, several others in our town. I'm sure you've heard the story. Uh, no. I actually, I've kind of had my face buried in a tree. I mean, in a book, in a tree. Well, in a sense, a book is a tree. Yes, I, I know. And I, I'm sorry, I want to be sensitive to all of my constituents. It's just a little tender for me to be talking about trees and books and things. I mean, the cruel jokes that ensued after my father's death. Things like, I hope he, I hope he didn't leaf a trace. It's cruel, you know. Mysterious forest deaths are not something to joke about. Uh, if you don't mind my asking, or please tell me if I'm out of line, but uh, how did your father pass? As she looks off into the distance, the wind blows a bunch of leaves up against the window, creating a scratching sound. Her, her mind wanders off, but soon... <clears throat> how oh, how I'm did sorry, your I, pass? The leaves against the window, it, it still isn't determined, you know. And there's some things that the city can't afford to investigate. Be it known that it was a cruel and unusual death, he and old man Johnson and old lady Spurley and and tiny Todd Roger. So, but like what did the body yes, look they like? all went into the forest, okay? They all went into the forest and all we found afterwards were unexplained clumps of leaves and paws old suspenders. Paws old. The anniversary of their death, that's all I can say. 
And at the same time, I have to focus on tonight's council meeting. The pizzeria isn't going to build itself. And, and really, Dr. Pubert, I, I hope I can count on your support. You know, for a sad lady just wanting to do good for the town. Um, I, I try to maintain myself to be apolitical. Um, I'm a apolitical simple... what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple professor. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bookworm essentially. And you know, I, I like to watch from a distance and not participate unless it involves trees and forestry. Now, I, just, uh, just a question. Is there anything now, please stop me if I'm stepping out of line, but uh, what if is there anything left of your father's remains and where would you find would one find them? In the most sensitive way possible, I ask. Yes, I have most of them in a shoebox. Which you know what? Tonight I will throw away. I need to say goodbye to those memories. Yes, that's this box. Pardon me while I walk to the front door. I'm throwing these out and I'm saying goodbye forever. Maybe I could take them. If you promise to say goodbye, for I already have. Ah, thank you. As he, thank as you. his hands graze the side of the box, it shakes just the smallest bit. Back to work for me. I hope to see you at the polls. Apolitical. We cut Apolitical back to the what? forest. We cut back to the forest where Teacher Helen stumbles across O'Shawn, the birder, and and lumberjack Steve. Uh, don't mind me just passing through, making a clear path for the parade that's bound to happen after this council meeting tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Well, <laughs> um, I was just marveling at the gorgeousness of the greenery around. Oh. Um, some of the leaves, the colors changing, it just reminds me of the fires in my students' minds, you know? Thank you so much. Walk this way with me, would you? Oh, shh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> One of them steps on something soft and squishy. Oh. Oh, uh, oh, oh. As off gassing comes out of our leafy friend's mouth. Oh, 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 oh God! Laugh, oh. gasp, and coughs up a lethal. No, <laughs> not again! Not again! Please take your eyes away. I need to do this. Just look away. <laughs> With a mighty chop. His head dismembers the body as it disappears oddly into the leafy ground. I'm I'm so sorry that you had to see that. Left only on the ground is a small piece of O'Shawn's belt. Why this, did you have to do that? You're new to this town, kid. You don't understand. 20 years ago, on this night, a man was taken from this world by the forest itself. Or at least, that's what I think happened. The police say that they're not sure, but I can tell you, the reason I keep this forest as maintained as I do is because the last thing I want is for this forest to think it has control. Humans have control, not the plants. You must have control! Not in the, the plants! Distance, in the distance, they hear the low squeaking and coughing of something that's unrecognizable. <coughs> it's... it's getting late. It's... it's almost the meeting time. Uh, I'll see you at the, the council office, right? I, I suppose so. I'm gonna grab this belt, though. It's... The meeting must oh, go kind of... on. Okay. I'll be there. We hear the town hall uh, bell chime seven o'clock. Time for the meeting.
Welcome, everyone. I know I'm not officially sitting on the council right now, but I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. As you know, that um, the council that will soon meet up, we hope, we're expecting them any time. I don't know why they're not here yet. Excuse um, me. Excuse me. Yes, constituent. Uh, yes, uh, council person. I, I am so sorry to interrupt, and normally I, I wait my turn until my hand is called on, but I am holding here the belt of a man who has passed on tonight. Uh, I'd like to speak on that, if you don't mind. Count. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, councilwoman. <laughs> you got my vote. Uh I just wanted you to know, um, A, William Miller was one of my best friends. Uh, B, that belt is the belt of Ochan Maxwell, <gasps> the bird watcher in this town. You know him. He's written plenty of memoirs and has at least two bird watching guides, guides written under his name. Yes. I tried my best. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think I've failed. I've failed your father. Can't you people see? Can't you people see? You need to stop being in the forest. We need to get rid of it. Get rid of all of it. No, 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 no. We can't get rid of the forest. Who? You're ta you're Helen, you're talking crazy. We can't get rid of the forest. We need, no, to, we need to tame the forest. Lumberjack Steve, she's got a point. What if that O'Shawn was you? Oh, oh, friend. okay, so the man who has all the money comes into this town and then tells us how to run it? I've been here my entire life, 72 years, and I look good. Dr. If Puberty. you want to continue looking good, you better be careful because I pay your paycheck. Puberty, doctor. Look, here's the thing. That last stretch of trees... It's not going to go down without a fight, <laughs> believe me. Now, I've been studying digestion of plants. I think I've told just about everybody this. And I am convinced that this clump of trees is, 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 a, is a very unique and, and special clump of trees. And look. In, a, in, in one small section of Wichita, in whatever state that's in, I think that's Kansas or Kansas. Arkansas. Kansas. 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 Yeah, it's Kansas. Yes. There has been a tree that has developed not one, not two, not three or four or five, but six summits. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, and it has been known to devour a cow. Where did, where did, oh, there you are. The windows, the window in the east, it's, it's broken out. Doctor, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying that these might not be normal trees that I can sell for lumber. Of course they are. Of course they're normal stop trees. Talking what? about business. I'm sorry to speak out of turn again, but we need to stop talking about business right now. Whatever just blew in that window was some spiky looking trees. <laughs> and it's really hard. Oh, this I just As they look the out the window, they can see that there is a, a grouping of trees that seems closer to the building than it did before. Its branches stretched out like arms into the sky. And where a human belly would be, the tree's trunk is bulbous and growing. That I maple. just ran outside. I just ran outside. All I've seen is tiny little pieces of belt from the council people that should be here. They're gone, don't you see? They're gone. It's just us. Okay, see, okay, so, this is the exactly, almost exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, I should be taking notes on this because, you know, publish or perish, am I right? But, okay, so here's the other thing. These trees have been able to 
shed their leaves, and much as like a, have you seen the? Okay, much as like, uh, if you scare a chameleon, its tail falls off. Yeah, that's, that's true. Because everybody knows that. From, a class from the tail, another chameleon grows. Right, right. Go on. Exactly. Of course. This is what is ha- this is what has been known to happen in Wichita. We Camden. hear squeaking. We hear squeaking and coughing. <laughs> when a tree sheds its leaves. Oh, listen. You all can go ahead and talk all this mumbo jumbo. I'm gonna go out there and take some action. I've got an axe, and let me tell you, the Lord above and. Your father, William, have been looking down on me. I'm going to make sure that those trees get cut. Yeah, Isn't that fair? Yeah. 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 Is there somewhere yeah. safe yeah. we can yeah. go? The Don't camera go. follows Steve as Steve rushes out the door. Steve is confronted by large, giant trees. The one closest to him has a giant belly, and where, where you'd think there would be a belly button, there is a top for maple syrup. But instead of maple syrup, it just pours forth blood. Blood all over the forest floor. Surround his body, his body. Making their way up to his throat and into his mouth, the leaf clumps smashed with the blood and the sap. He tries to cough, but is overtaken. His veins become roots, and they start growing out of his skin. He falls to the ground and is overcome by a pile of leaves that inch across his body. The leaves go up her nostrils, inside her eyes, in her mouth, and they start to push out on her chest from the inside. Dr. Puberty finds her stumbles upon out in the forest. I... Shoot. I was going to... I was trying to tell you not to go... Not to go outside. There's a rancid smell in the air of old, wet leaves decomposing. This has been a not good day. The box that he is holding starts to rumble inside. It's as if the leaves were trying to break out. There's a rumbling, there's a crunching. And a low squeak. (laughs) The box bursts open. It consumes, it consumes him. Over. The leaves. A half human. A little tiny piece of suspenders. A half human, half plant, half clothing voice ekes out the words. Must control the forest. Must control the forest. The camera pans up to the leaves and the trees above, and when it pans back down, all that is there is an empty box. We cut back to the council office. Francis! Francis, can't you see it's working? Can't you see it? I think I do, Helen. It's all going according to plan. And you, I've you there, the free. educator. Yes. Educate yourself. Educate yourself on the evils of the forest. Can't you see what it can do? Can't you see? I have an alternative perspective. I took a concentration in critical literacy when I was in my teacher prep program. And I want to ask this question. Whose voice is missing? In this story, this this story of, of, of an evil forest, I'll tell you whose voice is missing. The voice of the children. <laughs> children. Children aren't money makers. Children aren't paving the way to progress. 
It's people like me and Francis. <laughs> you know what I call children? Future consumers. <laughs> pizza, pizza. A pizza, pizza. pizza. <laughs> there are three knocks on the door. You guys? I Did feel like your favorite forest is coming for you, educator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better get the door. It's not dominoes. There's a joke in there, I think. <laughs> of course there is, Francis. Go ahead, answer the door, educator. The uh, knocks become more insistent and hello? louder. Who's there? Rosa? Leaves. Go in. Small coffee gets closer and closer as educator can smell rock leaves in the air. I, I don't head educator. Save the planet. <laughs> Listen. Here. I've got a bouquet of leaves for you, educator. Oh, God. Here. They're dead. At that moment, the wind comes in through all of the windows as they break. Not only are there leaves flooding the room, but for some reason there's hundred dollar bills. The hundred dollar bills whirl around <laughs> and around and around the rich guy. Wow. This is consumed by the dollar bills, or so he thinks they are, and goes after them. Turns out they aren't bills at all. They're more leaves. As he catches each one, it becomes a part of him, a part of his skin, a part of his nose, a part of his eyes. That's right, Francis. Oh, God. There's only room for one of us. Oh. There's only room for one. Pizza, pizza. And in his last breath, after exclaiming, pizza, pizza, he blows up. Just then, another wind blows in, and it's ballots for city council. I and will not vote for you! The city council ballots all swirl around Helen Miller. No! And as they swallow her up like a mummy, then a branch in the shape of a large hand reaches my future. wraps oh, around her and pulls her back out of the building. Okay. Okay. We can do this. For the children, for the environment, for the future. We can do this. Just open the door. Just open the door and 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 believe. It becomes quiet, eerily quiet. And then the sound of the door squeaking open. It reveals the most beautiful sunset. The and sun is setting back far in the distance through the path that was cleared through the forest. Off in the distance, she can see the children from her class waving at her. Hi, teacher. A tumbleweed of leaves gently rolls by. Some woodcocks do a little dance. And in the distance, we hear low squeaking. And black. 